Hi guys, Rob 46 here. Welcome yourself to MotoGP18. Yes, that is correct, MotoGP18. I was lucky enough to uh, get my game a few days early. So today I'm going to be uh, testing it out and see how it plays. So I'm going to do what I always do with MotoGP games. Go into time trial and see how it plays. So, okay, well, my internet's playing up at the moment. Um, so we're going to select a rider and of course use the guy I always use when I do these sorts of videos and that is Valentino Rossi with the wings on the uh, Yamaha so obviously we've got our Moto 2 riders as well Moto 3 as well and then we've also got um, Red Bull rookies as well so riders present and correct but yeah anyway back to MotoGP and I'm gonna pick Valentino Rossi and I think seeing as it was Mugello at the weekend I'm going to ride around Mugello and see how the game plays and uh, how we get on I have um, been playing MotoGP 17 a little bit recently so I need to change the assists put them on pro off track help off, auto token off, that oh off and manual. Okay, ready to go. So uh we'll keep it as clear for now. I will do a comparison video of uh MotoGP 18 versus 17 as well. So uh, be sure to stick around for that, that will be out very soon. See how the loading is. It's going up pretty quick. Oh, it's stuck at 30. So there was a 8.4 gig update for MotoGP 18. Um, so yeah, it's uh, a pretty big update. But I am ready to get my first play of MotoGP 18 and see how we get on around Mugello. Let's see how the game looks. So they have recreated the tracks on a one-to-one -one scale um, using 3D. There's Rossi walking into the pits. They have done um, facial capture as well of the MotoGP riders. There we go. Talking to uh, the mechanic. So let's have a look at bike settings first. So, tyre compound, apparently tyres play a bigger role in the game this year. I'm going to stick with softs on the front and rear because they shouldn't really do much in time trial. Suspension, you got a lot of uh, things to change there. Steering adjustment. Gear ratio, ah, that, that's quite interesting. It actually tells you now uh, what speed, it oh fucking hell, what? That's not. <laughs> that's going to put me up to 6,296 miles an hour. I don't think so. <laughs> that's obviously a little bug, but there may well be another update um, on the 7th of June. So front brake. Ah, so they're already on the largest brakes. And an ECU. Ah, we, we can control the engine brake in this time as well. So we've got engine braking and traction control system in there as well. I'll keep them both on for now. And I will do a lap with uh, with no traction control or engine braking on to see how it compares. And you can choose to start from the pit or start a flying lap. So Rossi's ready to go. Walk into the bike. Oh, he's doing his little stretch thing. Is he going to do his other thing where he bends down? He is! Well, that's a cool little detail that they've included. He does a little ritual before getting on the bike. So here we go, coming out of the pit. And he's adjusting his levers as well. <laughs> Another nice little detail. So out the pit we come, we've got yellow smoke. Obviously the home of Valentino Rossi. As well as Mazzano, obviously. So we'll get... And he looks over his shoulder as well, so nice little details going on at the moment. Okay, so through the first corner. Feels okay so far. Ooh. Wow. 
Feels pretty good at the moment, to be honest. I mean, this is just obviously sighting lap, really. Um, but yeah, it, de it definitely feels different to um, the previous MotoGP games. Obviously, this one being made with the Unreal Engine rather than Milestone's own in-house engine. That means that it's got different physics. Obviously, it looks better as well. Um, the only downside is that it's only 30 frames per second now on console, whereas MotoGP 17 was 60. And because I've been playing MotoGP 17, it's kind of quite noticeable. If you haven't played 17 and you've come from um, the previous game, then it won't really make much difference. But yeah, coming from 60 FPS back down to 30, you can uh, definitely tell the difference. But my eyes just need to get used to it, and then it should be fine. But one thing I've noticed is that change in direction seems a, a bit quicker this time as well. So that's going to make tight chicanes a bit easier to negotiate. But I'm actually liking the handling at the moment. It feels pretty damn good. Right, so here we go for my first flying lap. Go across the paint like they do it. Oh, that's invalidate. Okay, so that invalidates your lap going on that bit of paint, despite the fact they do that in real life. Movement on the brakes as well. That's nice. That's one thing we didn't really get in previous MotoGP games. You didn't get a hell of a lot of movement when you were on the brakes, unless you completely messed it up. Um, but again, that's a, a nice detail we got there. Yeah, it does move around on the brakes. That's good. It tries wheelie in itself as well. That wasn't me popping that wheelie then. That was uh, just the power of the bike doing that. It's weird because it feels different to previous MotoGP games, but at the same time, it feels quite familiar. It's definitely tweaked from previous games, which is nice. And like I said, it does feel different, but it isn't like dramatically different that it won't take you a long time to get used to it. I mean, we haven't done anything too stupid so far. Apart from invalidating our lap right at the beginning, but... No, it feels really nice. It feels nice and planted. The rear feels pretty good. It doesn't feel like it wants to step out at any given moment like it has done in previous games. The track looks different as well because, like I said at the beginning of the video, they have recreated the tracks on a one-to-one -one scale now. So they are as accurate as they can be. And you can tell they, they look different to previous games. Get on the brakes again. Oh, no, no, no. Oh, well. Had a lot of movement then and ran completely wide. I braked a bit too late. But yeah, I like that movement on the brakes. That is good. But again, we've invalidated our lap time. But now nah, this is impressive. We've got the corner names coming up as well. That's a nice little touch. For anyone who likes to learn corner names, that's something nice to have. And you always know what corner you're at because it gives you the number of the corner as well. And now I'm, I'm enjoying this. Feels really good. It's going to be interesting to see what it, what it's like in a race. Um, because apparently the collisions have been overhauled as well, so hopefully collision detection is even better. And hopefully you can't just fall off if someone sneezes on you. I mean, the MotoGP 17 collisions weren't too bad. They were better than the Ride 2 collision physics. Um, Ride 2s were really like light as the touches and you could go down. Um, so yeah, it would be interesting to see how that compares to the end of another lap. I do like that movement on the brakes. Rider movement looks pretty good as well. It's more obvious that 
you're controlling the actual rider, his body weight, more than the bike itself now, which is nice. Okay, so we haven't invalidated this one, so let's hope we can get a nice clean run together. Got it stopped in time that time. Sound... It sounds very... Very similar, if not exactly the same, to GP17. GP17 was a big step up in terms of sound um, from the previous game. So... When I do a uh, comparison, I'll be able to tell a bit more if the sound is any different. Ooh! I was invalidating my time again. Because I had seen a bit of gameplay from people playing this, and they were all over the place. But, no, it's it feels really good. It may look a bit weird to begin with, um, with the way the bike moves and that. Um, but yeah, changing direction is definitely a lot quicker. And you can see them moving their body weight from one side of the bike to the other to get it to change direction as well, which is a nice nice little touch. I am definitely enjoying this. I know that there's a few people, well quite a few people, that would have um, skipped a few MotoGP games. Maybe some people that maybe stopped on 15 or something because they didn't think it was too much of a, a difference between iterations. At the end of the day, it's still going to be a MotoGP game. It's like FIFA games. People buy FIFA games year after year when usually it's just like team updates and that. Um, I mean, uh, that's the thing with like all kind of sport and motorsport games. Again, movement on the brakes, gun wide, but getting it stopped, cut that back for a late apex. But yeah, it's, it, it's, at the end of the day, it's still MotoGP, but yeah, they have really changed a hell of a lot compared to previous iterations of the game. So, we've actually got a clutch as well. Um, so, LB is actually a clutch. Now this is mainly, well this is just for starts really. Um, so you can use the clutch off the starts. Now that is something that people have been asking for for quite a long time. They've had it in like MXGP and that. But now we have a clutch in MotoGP. So when it comes to race starts you'll be able to release the clutch at the right or wrong time depending on how well you get used to it. But that is another nice little feature. And then we'll test that out in a race. So I want to change the... We can change the traction control. You can see down there by the little speedo. So turning traction control off and engine braking as well I'll turn off. And see how we go compared to um, the lap we've just done. So the quickest lap we've done so far is a 149.653. So we'll come around and finish this one. And do a full flying lap without... Well, without any assists whatsoever. And see how it compares. See how difficult or how easy it is with traction control off. Whether the rear is going to step around. Oh! Well, I just answered my own question. <laughs> well, don't give it a handful of throttle going around at full lean because it will high side you. <laughs> Alright. So let's come round. And we're going to start a lap without any assist. We're going to have to be quite gentle on the throttle, I think. Like I said, I answered my own question with that. Let's see where we are. Oh, yeah. With engine braking turned off, you definitely have to brake a little bit earlier. I can see myself going wide at some corners, but here we go then. So here we go to start the first flying lap with no assists. Are we going to get it stopped? Yes, we are. Alright. Well, we are behind our previous time at the moment. Got a bit wide there. Ooh, wheelie. Wheelie. 
a little bit too deep again. It's the trouble with relying on engine braking when you don't have it. Now, now we're in front. Okay. The good thing is, with no traction control, rear is stepping out. We can get the power on a bit earlier, within reason. Oh, we've lost it again at the moment. Through our Viat T. Yeah, we've got a good, good line through there. This is looking promising, actually, for a quicker lap. Round the long right. Okay, we've got the quick chicane coming up. And we're point 0.3 under our quickest time so far. Oh, getting it a bit squirrely on the brakes. get the power on a bit earlier around the final corner as well and we've extended that lead as well and that is a better time brakes can we do another lap maybe oh nearly lost it <laughs> That was so close. But I have to admit, oh, well, uh, we'll mess that one up. There was one corner on here which is usually a bit dodgy for the rear, but it's not anymore. Now, I'm thinking that maybe they've sorted the rear end issue that we've had in previous MotoGP games. Bruno was probably one of the worst circuits for it. We are going to try a bit of first person action. So cockpit cam for the moment. Feels a little bit weird. But again, would have to get used to it. So don't generally use first person in MotoGP games. I'll try the helmet cam in a moment as well. See how we get on with that. But yeah, the rear seems like it's sorted. We'll try the helmet camera. Oh, well they've changed the helmet camera then, because usually you could see part of the innards of the helmet kind of like stuck on the screen. Now it's just like you're looking through a tinted visor. Again, it's going to be another camera angle to try and get used to. But yeah, the rear, it seems, has been sorted out finally. I will have to do um, a run around Bruno just to test that to see if it is actually true. So there's quite a few corners at Bruno that were quite dodgy, especially in MotoGP 17. So I will try them out at some point just to test the rear. I'm not planning on going any quicker using this camera, but I just want to see how it is, getting it squirrelly on the brakes. I don't feel too bad actually. We've hit a few apexes. I'm not going as quick, admittedly, but it's going alright. Bit wide there. Ooh. Oh no, and validated our lap time went on the grass. So yeah, that is uh, my first look at MotoGP 18. All I can say is positive things. Um, it is an improvement over previous iterations of the game. It feels good to, to play. The physics feel good. The rear doesn't seem to step out at weird times like it has done in previous games. It looks better. It feels better. And I'm really looking forward to uh, getting... Oh, wheelies are quite difficult by the looks of it. <laughs> yeah, definitely looking forward to uh, playing this online and uh, doing career and stuff like that. So... Yeah, thumbs up from me for my first look at MotoGP 18. And I can't wait to play more of it. Anyway, guys, that is it from me. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to leave this video a like if you enjoyed it. Subscribe to my channel for more content. And I shall see you guys in the next video. See you.